so i think now the next step should be definition of load patterns and then assign different loads and add them in the load patterns then load patterns should be called in the load cases uh, for running the analysis and if you want to do design also you have to combine those load cases into finally the load combinations so this should be the next step and this is where uh, the use of the, the seismic analysis procedures obviously will be involved because here uh, in the loads you have to define the seismic load for example so um, the first step as i have said is definition of load patterns so these three options patterns cases and combinations they are in the same order here in the define menu so first thing is the load patterns this is where you define the nature and type of loading so there is a one default load pattern which is by the name dead and its type is also dead you can also define a live load pattern and other type also uh, but we'll be focusing on the earthquake load pattern so this time uh, and let's say that we want to apply the equivalent lateral force procedure the code based seismic analysis procedure so we'll be selecting this quake type of load give it some name for example elfx x direction equivalent lateral forces and then self weight multiplier should be obviously zero for this particular uh, load pattern it should be one for only the uh, pattern which includes the self weight which is dead by default so i'll be selecting a particularly applicable uh, building code here from which the automated lateral load forces should be calculated and applied to this structure so for this particular example i'll be using asc 716 we know that asc 722 is already here but i think it is not currently available in this version of sap so i'll be focusing only on asc 716 yes here is also 16 yes so i select that code and then modify it so it will be oh sorry i should shouldn't be modifying it that i should be actually adding that so let me just quickly again go to dead dead self weight multiplier one and let me add this time add new load pattern so this was uh, the default one dead one this is the one i added now and after selecting that code and adding i can modify this later load pattern here and this new form will appear this form will be different for each code if i have selected some other code this would be different because this form is actually asking you to define those inputs which are required to calculate the equivalent later forces corresponding to that code only so asc 716 requires the user to actually start from ss and s1 the short and long period spectral accelerations for your particular site so you will be giving your ss and s1 corresponding to your site corresponding to the uh, the seismic hazard maps available in the building code of your area and then the long period transition period uh, tl uh, which is also required to calculate the equivalent static forces and the uh, predominating direction it is x direction forces so i just select x the centricity ratio is five percent by default as prescribed in asc 716 unless you have a torsional irregularity or some other type of irregularity and then you have to amplify this eccentricity you have to define a site class let's say site class d and rest is all calculated by the program uh, if you want you can define your user defined approx approximate time period or if you want you can ask the program to calculate it for you but in that case uh, since it provides you a table uh, of uh, c t and x coefficients to be picked and then uh, use the approximate time period formula so you have to select the applicable row in that particular uh, particular um, uh, table prescribed by ac 716 so please check that your c t and x values uh, for your structural system which one is applicable and that one you will select from here uh, if you want to if you want the program to automatically calculate the time period similarly you can define the uh, the the stories or the z elevation levels up till which the equivalent static forces should be applied if you want your own user defined range uh, the minimum level and the maximum level uh, you can give it 
otherwise the program is also capable of uh, determining based on your structural geometry uh, where it should apply the equivalent static forces these are the code uh, parameters which should be uh, provided here uh, you know the response modification factor the overstrength factor the displacement amplification factor and the occupancy importance all of these uh, parameters uh, should be they, they are actually used to calculate the uh, base shear coefficient and then that base shear determined in this manner should be uh, uh, actually applied along the height of the structure so once you give these parameters and click ok you don't need to provide the equivalent static forces for each story separately the program can do it for you and uh, it can simply uh, apply those forces and then when you run that particular load case uh, you will see that it can show you the results for that analysis so I click OK current uh, for this particular form and my X direction forces are applied uh, actually defined the pattern is defined and uh, then I can maybe copy this load pattern again and modify it again and this time I select Y direction and uh, I can I should actually give it a different name ELFY for example and then modify the load pattern so now the name is changed to ELFY so I have ELFX and ELFY both according to AC716 based on my parameters which obviously you will be providing for a real uh, real case they will be different so I click OK and that's how I will define the load patterns for the equivalent static force procedure uh, but now uh, unless I define a load case these patterns won't be applied to your structure so the next step should be define and then load case after patterns we have to define load case and we have to call those patterns in the load cases so when I go there I can see that that um, uh, ELF pattern is already defined here uh, but I think it should be both X and Y because the I have defined the load patterns when you define a pattern the corresponding load case is automatically defined otherwise you can just click on it and modify it and here you can see that ELF Y pattern which is automatically uh, populated here you can uh, you can change its properties but I think it would be better if I delete it and start from uh, from scratch so I can delete this one and uh, just uh, leave the other ones here the, the modal case is already uh, you can see here that it is already defined uh, you can modify it but no need to separately define a modal load case actually it's not a load case it is a modal case to determine the mode shapes and natural time periods and other modal properties of the structure but uh, uh, we will be focusing on ELF procedure now so I add a new load case and I give it a name let me call it ELFX again the name of the case also can be same and it obviously it should start from zero initial conditions because it is a, a linear static analysis but I could also go for other uh, types of analysis also you can see here the response spectrum you can also see here the the time history analysis so time history again can be linear and non-linear uh, response spectrum obviously will require a linear model static analysis will also be either linear or non-linear so we will be selecting linear because ELF is a linear analysis procedure so uh, zero initial conditions linear static and after that I have to call a particular load pattern into this case so I can either call a load pattern or an acceleration pattern obviously we will be using an acceleration pattern for time history analysis but for this case we will be selecting it as a load pattern and this is the list of patterns which are available or we have defined so I will be selecting ELF X and if I want to multiply a particular uh, number by this load pattern uh, I can give it as a scale factor here if I just want to apply the automatically calculated code forces I'll be simply using it as one and click on add I can add more than one patterns in a particular load case but I think uh, let's keep it separate so in the ELF X load case we'll be applying the uh, ELF pattern 
once you click ok now you have actually uh, defined a particular uh, load case for which you can run the analysis so now you can actually say that the forces are applied to your structure similarly i can add a copy of the same load case add copy of it and make it as y direction so this can be elf y and load name can pattern name can be elf y and then i modify it other things can remain same one important thing which i missed here is the mass source because obviously the program will be determining the uh, the the base shear coefficient and then multiplying it with the seismic weight so we have to tell from where the mass and weight of the structure of this model should come from and that is the mass source option which you, we should define i think even before the application of load cases so i click ok so my load cases for x and y direction equivalent lateral forces are up, applied or uh, defined already i click ok again and then i go back to define and mass source here should be mass source okay this one here obviously there is no fixed sequence of uh, doing things in sap 2000 this is what i am using but you can use a different sequence also uh, some people are more comfortable with actually drawing the geometry first and then defining a material and then assigning that cross section and materials to that geometry later on uh, that can also be a valid sequence in that case you will be obviously selecting a particular element for example selecting this beam and go to assign and frame and then frame sections and here you can assign a cross section and click apply that can also be assigned so you can just select any cross section and complete the geometry and then assign later on also similarly defining a mass source can also be done before running the analysis so go to define mass source and then here you should define a new mass source or you can modify the existing one i can modify it so here i should tell that from where the self weight or mass of the structure or any additional mass if i have applied should come from or included in the mass of the structure so there are two options one is the element self mass we have already defined materials in which we have given the unit weight that materials were assigned to cross sections those cross sections were assigned to elements and elements make your full structure so the program already have the element self mass uh, it has the density and all the cross-sectional shapes and geometry so it can determine the self mass and you can also define an, an additional mass in the assign menu uh, but i didn't show it to you in this particular example uh, so if you check this one uh, you are actually telling the program that okay sell, use only the self weight of the structure or mass of the structure uh, to calculate seismic weight but sometimes you also want for example a portion of live load also to be considered in the seismic weight in that case you can go for specified load patterns and here you can select a particular pattern with a multiplier and you can add it here and that weight will also that load will also be converted into mass of the structure so you can select you can define a live load pattern and then you can uh, uh, select a multiplier and for example 0 0.25 so 25 percent of your live load will also be converted to the seismic weight right so let me just quickly show you that also before i uh, complete that process and show you the results uh, because i can see that i have a very uh, limited time left so maybe uh, i can uh, define a new load pattern called live so let me just define a new load pattern live and add some load in it some area load or element load for example self weight multiplier will be zero and its type will be live and then i can just add it currently only the pattern is added and there is no load in it right uh, the automated calculated quake forces have a load in it dead have a load in it because it has a self weight multiplier it has a self weight but live doesn't have any load in it unless we apply some area load or point load or superimposed loads any load so let me just select any slab so this slab is selected you can see here on this 
three dimensional view also and also at the bottom you can see one areas or four edges selected so after confirm confirming that you have selected a right element you can go to assign and then there are three options for assigning the load area load or point load or element load one is called joint load one is called frame load and another is called cable tendon and then finally is the area load and then solid loads so i'll be going into area loads because I, because i have selected an area and then type of loading i can select as gravity load or you can also go for uniform shell i can just click on gravity and uh, here i have to select a load pattern in which pattern this load whatever i'm going to give now will be added so the actual load values which you apply go to a particular load pattern that pattern go to a load case and the analysis is run for the case so um, here i say that in the global z direction in the gravity direction i can give a number any number if i give it will be applied to this particular uh, you can say area load so you do, depending upon what live load you want or area load you can uh, add here uh, alternatively you can also go to assign uh, area loads and then uniform shell here also you can uh, load direction you can select uh, gravity is by default downward but you can have any direction in this particular option so i can select a live load pattern uh, i can select the gravity direction and then load may be for example any number let's say 100 uh, so let's say 1 newton per millimeter square and then i can add to existing or replace existing uh, i can maybe there is no existing load so it doesn't matter actually so i can click on apply and then you can see a symbol here showing the application of a uniform load you can always right click on that element and go to the assignments and loads to see what are the uh, associated properties currently you have given to that we have given a load so you can see here that it shows a load pattern of live and the value is one it is uh, the direction is gravity right so it will be blinking like that